Then goes empty again. Third and eight with three receivers left, two to the right. Here's the snap. He throws it down the field. Oh, that is Chase Claypool into the end zone for a Pittsburgh Steelers touchdown. Wide open from 35 out, and Ben kind of knew it. Yeah. (laughs) It's Chase Claypool's world. We're just living in it. Welcome back to Five Star Matchup. If you dig our content, please subscribe and share. Also, check out our Patreon for some sick exclusives and merch. Did you miss me last week? We're back in the city of champions for the much-celebrated Battle of Pennsylvania, and as I see it, we've got two quarterbacks determined to prove who they are. Both will battle, but only one can come out on top. Start off here with a little run on the first play, and you gotta wonder why you should ever bother running at Vince Williams. T.F.L. King. Same possession third and ten. Wentz waits, scrambles, and gets caught by the birthday boy T.J. Watt. You simply cannot tell me there's a more electric defensive player in the league at this point. Over to Ben and the boys, and it's easy money for Chase the Bank Claypool on a nice conversion. Quality play, but Ben could have had his choice of any three receivers on this one. Third and medium here, Ben hits my guy Jay Wash on a crosser for another conversion. Washington is not flashy in the least, but the dude just catches the ball and goes forward. He's a weird player to evaluate, but I love what he gives them. Another thing James does well on display here as he draws a P.I. on Darius Slay. I thought this was a bit of a ticky-tack P.I. call here. You guys know I'm always fair on penalties both ways, and I just don't see it here. Down at the goal line now, and the Matt Canada effect is on full display as Chase Claypool runs it in for the opening score. Mapletron is what you might call physically gifted. Time to shut him down and take control of this game. Wentz hands off to Miles Sanders who makes a whap and is on his horse all the way to the house. Great play by a great player. Hilton makes this tackle 9 times out of 10. I would be lying if I said I wasn't getting a little concerned by Bush getting suctioned in the run game from time to time. No doubt his speed is awesome though as he nearly catches up to Sanders. 7-7. Onto the second quarter and not one to be outdone, James Conner takes a tote and gashes the Eagles up the gut like he was going to skin them and eat them for dinner. I don't know how Eagle tastes, but maybe I should ask a certain rookie. Ben drops back and like clockwork, he slings a rocket to the bank who makes a little whomp of his own and you just can't catch him. For those keeping score, that's two direct deposits and a 14-7 lead for the Steelers. We're approaching rarefied air only a quarter of the way through Chase's rookie season. He's had a bigger impact than most first rounders. A plus again for Kev and Coach T. Pair of throws to Travis Fulgham here and we're going to need to get used to hearing that. Great play by Wentz, who does his best Roethlisberger impression and converts again to Fulgham, who is apparently unguardable. Vince also gets called for a bogus personal foul. The ref crew was bad in both directions today. Back to DeAndre Hopkins, I mean Travis Fulgham, who Minka does his best to try and push over and the Eagles are back into the red zone. Sanders plows in from the one to tie us back up at 14. Very disappointing defensive series. Hey, I know it's easy to forget since we didn't have one last year, but at least we have an offense again. Nice screen call here to Connor, who follows some great blocking from Dotson and Pouncey for the first. Vintage Roethlisberger as he navigates the pocket and flips a little lollipop to the Abrontosaurus who makes a great catch. Nice play and Ebron continues to flash. Juju may not have the biggest impact on the stat sheet every week, but here he flashes why he's still the most technically advanced receiver on the team, with a beautiful adjustment and catch. He's much more of a Heinz Ward than he is an Antonio Brown. Gotta say it every week, pay the man, Kev. Drive stalls out, but the boss never fails and the Steelers pull back in front 17-14. Great chance to get a stop and another chance at points before the half. Big play in the run game by 2020 Defensive Player of the Year TJ Watt, followed with a coverage sack by Godzilla Hayward, and the Steelers are looking good at 3rd and 17. A weak three-man rush gives Carson Wentz 45 minutes to find a guy who's somehow sitting between, count them, five Steelers who aren't within five yards of an eagle for a gigantic third down conversion. Elite defenses can't do this. Another tepid rush gives Wentz time to load up for a shot play, and he takes it right at Joe, who I guess has good coverage? I don't think he really made the difference in the play, just not a great throw or attempt at the catch. 
But sometimes the football gods do smile on you though, as the Eagles do complete this shot play, but luckily not enough time left on the clock, and we go to half, 17 to 14. Beautiful third down conversion by the Abrontosaurus who keeps his balance and sticks that long neck out there for a first. The Matt Canada effect on display again here as the Steelers' suddenly modern offense runs a sneaky reverse to the one they call Ray Ray, who does indeed make a play play. Credit to Zach on Twitter, follow him, even though he ludicrously doesn't follow me. Incredible speed on display by McLeod, who shows why he earned his roster spot. And you love to see the blocks by Vance and Akorafor, who spring this thing loose. Great play. The Eagles seem to think this is an illegal formation, but unfortunately for them, it's not, and Bionic Ben slings yet another direct deposit for six out to Claypool, who follows his blockers for an absurd third score of the day. Real interesting formation with Edmonds, Connor, and Vance out front. Offensive creativity, and yet another stud receiver? File this one under things you love to f***ing see. Back to defense and quack. With no one near him, Wentz chucks a duck to Steven Nelson, who says thank you very much. Glad Nelson made the play, but that's a truly awful throw and an otherwise strong day for Wentz. Just a head scratcher. Gotta show this one for the peeps who say I never show offensive line play. How about young number 69 locking up Fletcher Cox here? Guy looks legit. Jaywash draws another PI, this one legit and dumb by the defender, and they hand it to the hammer, Mr. James, don't call him John Connor, who plows through the line and puts the Steelers up a nearly insurmountable 17 points. Great blitz by Mike Hilton, what else is new, who cuts through the line like a hot knife through butter and lays Carson down by the fire for a DB sack. I'm sorry, is number 13 on the Eagles actually Randy Moss, or is that... No, that's in fact a guy I've never heard of before today. Say what you want about the defense, Travis Fulgham looks like a real player, man. Wow. Again, Wentz gets an eternity and he wings another terrible throw for an incompletion, but gets bailed out by another ticky-tack PI, and I don't blame Joe for his frustration. I really don't know why teams try to run at the Steelers. It's almost completely pointless. Fun fact, Miles Sanders' long run currently equals 29% of the total rushing yards the Steelers' defense has given up so far this season. Another poor secondary play here as Joe seems to misread something and leaves Greg Ward wide open for the score. I know a lot of people are going to be worried about the back end, but I'm seeing a lot more mental errors than physical. And that's better news, particularly in the case of Hayden, whose age we don't want to consider. Two-point conversion looks to be on Minka to my eye, and I think you can see he's just pressing a little hard to go for the splash play. It's okay, Mink man. They'll come. Almost another dandy for first place Chase who does everything right but get one of his giant Canadian toes down. Can't win them all. Interesting moment I noticed here on third down as Eric Ebron gets called for a false start and really seems to take it hard. Keep this in mind. Another decade and a half for Carson Wentz to find a target and obviously it's Fulgham who makes another impressive catch, this time on Nelson who's actually in good coverage. Great play. A little heat coming at Wentz finally, but he finds the unstoppable one, Travis Fulgham. Tell me you would have predicted that sentence before the season. And the Steelers head into the fourth with a very tenuous nine-point lead. Wentz easily snatches candy from a baby, as the 6'2 Fulgham is simply too big for the 5'9 Mike Hilton. I love Mike, but you can't put him in these spots. A few plays later and what else is new? Travis f***ing Fulgham is wide f***ing open for a f***ing score. X's and O's guys help me out on this one. Looks like it could be either Nelson or Minka's fault. Tell me what you think. Huge third and four and ka-ching. Rookie Chase Claypool makes a combat catch on all pro corner Darius Slay and frankly I've run out of superlatives for the man. He's unbelievable. Look at the trust here by Ben to Claypool. He throws a damn seed to the exact right spot, and Claypool pulls a Jordy Nelson for a huge play, but unfortunately another bogus PI ruins both it and my mood. I don't know what else to say, the officiating was terrible in this game. Chase doesn't even touch the guy on this play. On third and a mile, Roethlisberger decides to just take a few easy yards and unfortunately the Abrontosaurus temporarily forgets which team he's supposed to be friendly to, and he coughs it up in the clutch. I love the man, but you could see he was in his own head after the false start. Big play by the Eagles D to keep him in it. This one's for all the Edmonds haters. Absolutely perfect read and reaction by Terrell, who, dare I say, is improving? 
close but no cigar pressure rep by Highsmith, and Joe gets beat again. Just an out of the ordinary day for 23. Do it to it with an absolutely Herculean effort to take Carson Wentz down for the sack. Dude was loading up for a shot and it looked like he had it. Gigantic moment on third and five and as always it's Fulgham on Hayden and the savvy vet comes through. Clutch play by Joe that might have saved the game. Which brings us to... And this is a 57 yard field goal attempt. The kick by Elliott is on its way. It's long enough. It's high enough, but it's wide right. And the Steelers duck a huge bullet. After the missed field goal, Connor goes nowhere, but a personal foul sets the Steelers up and they're officially on the attack. Almost another disaster by Ebron who can hopefully move on next week. Luckily, it's just a harmless drop and it sets up our five star play of the game. Ben goes empty again, third and eight at the Eagles 35 yard line. He directs traffic, making sure everybody's on the same page with three receivers left, two to the right. Here's the snap. He throws it down the field. Oh, that is Chase Claypool into oh. the end zone for a Pittsburgh Steelers touchdown. Wide open from 35 out, and Ben kind of knew it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I've been saying it all day. This is our fourth time saying it, but that's top shelf Canadian bacon and sizzling. He was looking at Chase Claypool the whole time. No need to drool. That's just Chase Claypool. Unbelievably, in the most important moment of the game, the Eagles go cover two with the closest defender to Claypool being a hopeless linebacker who might as well be a potato, and it's ball game for the Berg boys. You can actually see the exact moment Ben notices the coverage to change the play, and you can see the exact moment where the old gunslinger knew, for sure, that he was back. First and ten, world's richest man, Bud Dupree, beats the left tackle like a rented mule and puts the birds behind the eight ball. Seriously, how many athletes are there like Bud Dupree in the NFL? Fourth and twenty and it's desperation time for Wentz and quoth the Steeler, nevermore. Nelson comes down with his second pick of the day and the birds are officially cooked. Steelers run my favorite play a few times and this one is in the books. Your Pittsburgh Steelers are four and oh for the first time since 1979 and man does it feel good to say that. In a year that has been anything but normal, the Pittsburgh Steelers have followed suit they were forced into taking an early bye, which they practiced through anyway. You know what? We do not care. They've brought back a better than ever and bionic version of Ben Roethlisberger, and he's slinging it to the tune of a 10 to one touchdown to interception ratio. We do not care. They've dealt with injuries along the offensive line and required contributions from rookies. We do not care. The defense has not been as good as it can be yet, and neither has the offense, but I can't express this enough. We do not care. The Pittsburgh Steelers are 4-0, and that, well, that's what we do care about. Here we go. If you're still here, peep my Patreon link below. You can join for just a buck fifty, and I assure you the extra content is worth it if you dig the channel. Also, Chase Claypool fucking rules. Oh my goodness, I'm telling you, my gullet was churning on that one.